it's about getting into schools and talking to young people because you know I, I know that people can change uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever and we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there absolutely Hey there guys, we are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults and those who wish to be as different as possible. So thank you very much. To find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do, and more importantly, how you can help, head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com. Hi, I'm Sarah Hughes and you are listening to... What were you listening to? The hmm, the Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. The Chronicles of Podcast. Do 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 do. The Chronicles of Podcast with Tom and Jamie. Yeah. Take part in Britain's Got Talent with my ass boys. Welcome to Hashtag WBW Way Back Wednesday. And these are the chronicles of Drew Cameron. Why Drew this week, Jamie? Why Drew this week? Because quite frankly, we don't have many left to get through. So we decided to release Drew. But it doesn't matter. We don't need a reason, ladies and gentlemen, because this interview is fucking wonderful it is great it's just full of impressions pretty much um <laughs> this way just the, the simpsons one's got me completely got me so i was so happy the fact that i had her homage the entire time um but this interview my internet really really didn't like me uh so there are quite a few moments where i'm like <laughs> i forgot all about that actually so yeah it's pretty much just jamie and drew shooting the shit and having a bit of a laugh my favourite thing from when I was re-looking at this interview is the size of your beard, sir. You look unrecognisable. Really? You look so different, it's unreal. Yeah, the other half was like, I would not have gone out of here if you had a beard like that long. And I was like, that's oh, fair. Well, there we are then. <laughs> but no, this is a hilarious conversation. Drew is so good at what he does. He's currently continuing to tour the country with Phony Falls and Horses, where he plays Uncle Albert. And it's just incredible what they do. They do weddings, they do stage shows, they do all sorts of things. If you couldn't guess from the name, it is an impressionist live show of Only Fools and Horses. It is absolutely amazing. Drew also, you can find him at comedyimpressionist.com because he does cameo appearances, doing voices. He does all sorts of stand-up shows. And whatnot. He's absolutely brilliant. Like We talked to him all about his time. Britain's Got Talent. Just Yeah, this is superb. So much fun. Yeah, there's a lot of inside Britain's Got Talent as well, so it's a yes. highly recommended. But yeah, that and just the fact, just again, just the Simpsons impressions just do it for me. Um, it just made it glorious. So yeah, definitely come and check this bad boy out. Uh, and if you can go and see Phony Force and Horses, go and see it, get your tickets now, or go and see Drew Cameron on stage, because I bet it's a bit of a laugh. I reckon so. I reckon so. <laughs> Jamie! <laughs> yes, sir! Any final words at all? Just a huge thank you to the comedy impressionist, Drew Cameron. This is so much fun. Thank you for taking time out to sit with us. Hope you're well, sir. And hope to hear from you soon. Absolutely. Drew, thank you so much for taking the time out to sit down and chat to us. We really enjoyed it during those pandemic times. And uh, yeah, enjoy, guys. This is a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the chronicles of Drew Cameron. Barfightians, we have... A man of many faces and voices with us today, a stand-up chameleon, as he is known. 
voted Best Variety Act by the NEA in 2013, and Britain's Got Talent semi-finalist, as well as a previous compare for Brian May. How badass is that? <laughs> Welcome to the show, <laughs> Mr. Drew Cameron. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've got to tell you, I am two-faced. Well, three, four, five, five well, loads of faces, really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were throwing to Batman again then. <laughs> I know. Um, so, uh, how's lockdown been treating you? Uh, I've been, I'm, I'm of a certain age, you know, and uh, a little bit seen it, so I haven't got a mortgage. So, that's, that's really good. That's um, good. Yeah. I, I haven't been affected too much, like with debts, and the, the government have been helping out a fair bit. And it's the positive is that I've been managing to do things that I've been saying, oh, I haven't got time to do this, I haven't got time, I want to do it, I haven't got... and I've been pushing to do things that I haven't got time to do. So That's wonderful. Positive. That's really yeah. good. So have you, have you taught yourself anything new or learned anything new, or is it just odd jobs here and there? Uh, well, I, one big thing was I used to run a stage school, and it was a uh, full-time academic performing arts school, yeah. and I taught the dance, you know, ballet and tap and art and drama. And I was the headmaster. And uh, there was so much. Our kids did so many TVs and films and theatre shows. And I've got all the videos and pictures. And a lot of the ex-kids haven't got it. And I, I really want to build a website to put it all on so they can show their kids and all that memorabilia to come back. So that's what I've been working on. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Man of many talents, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also rescue wild animals as a hobby, so I've, that that's takes me time up as well. <laughs> that's, wow. I'm, I'm, that's I'm, I'm stunned. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> what a start. <laughs> and, <laughs> and one one other thing, later, I used to do a lot of artwork because um, I used to teach art, and um, I haven't done it for ages. I've been too busy. And now yeah. I've got back into it as well doing that kind of thing <laughs> that's so cool very artistic i created yeah, keep yourself busy though that's, that's absolutely wonderful yeah it's what you needed yeah, to do like... in these crazy times though isn't it just keep yourself busy otherwise you go yeah. a little bit loopy i'm really so, busy so obviously covid's been quite hard on a lot of people like artists wise and whatnot did you have much planned that you've had to cancel or postpone or anything y- yes i do i do a stand up comedy impressions uh, and I also do lookalikes um, which I do a lot for parties and corporate stuff and very much weddings I gate crash the speeches as Del Boy and you sort of burst in saying oh, what didn't you what's that you what's going on here then <laughs> you know, doing all that as a lookalike and then coming out in Uncle Albert oh was in a white well you, you look like Uncle Albert but without the white <laughs> Thank, <thanks. laughs> I can't do the voice though. I'm not going to attempt it. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and so I do lots of other lookalikes and, and that. And obviously, it stopped. And and also did um, started a, a phony falls and horses show. There was me and two other performers, and we did five characters. And it was a dining experience. Um, you probably know dining experience. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we, we were doing that, and we were we we had gigs abroad in Lanzarote and things like that. And I started a theatre show out of it, and oh, wow. we were really kicking off into theatres. And it was really hard work. So I'm not much of a promoter myself. You know, I'm a performer, and I was really working. And we really got them all booked up. And then, of course, COVID came in, and that all got stopped. So. That is one thing I've got to really get together. But I've been doing a couple of gigs lately at private parties, so let's get in there. Is the phony fools and horses going to be rescheduled for next year? Yes, um, putting in dates now for the theatres, and obviously not a lot of people are booking up for the dining experience. Yet we've got a couple in December. Yeah, um, but yeah, got to wait and work on that. Oh, it's such a shame as now everything just got literally got ruined. The world just stopped. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Yeah, but this time next year we'll be millionaires, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's open. <laughs> I don't think it could have been a better time to pull that line out. That was great. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I do others for you. I could do Jackie Squirly. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> Anything you want, I can be anyone you want. Thank you, yeah, boys. You job, you do job. Great, great. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> don't want him anywhere near my show. Don't do Don't get him started on Boris. <laughs> yeah. No, perhaps you want to. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. It's great. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Anyway, <laughs> oh, so my internet how, connection is not great. I do apologise. <laughs> how long ago did you start doing all this then? Oh, lovely question that is. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, I'll keep this fairly short. I met a lady at a local jumble sale years ago. It was. She told me she used to be my school nurse. When I was at primary school, I was doing it then. A teacher would come and tell me off, walk away, and apparently I'd copy them. And, you know, now it's in impressions. Then it was a gobby, cheeky little git. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that's what I was doing. And then through my junior school, I, luckily I had a teacher who was married to a well-known actor. And she was very much in, in helping me do this. And I remember very much doing my own little sketch piece called The Three Hats. And I'll go into the broom cupboard, put a hat on and come out and do that. And then when I was 14, you probably, you're too young to probably know this. Have you ever heard of Opportunity Knox? Name sounds familiar, to be honest. I, have I can't think what it is. In the 60s and 70s, it was the Britain's Got Talent show. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll it, yeah. Have you heard of Pickety Witch? The band Pickety Witch, you know? You're so no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was on the TV programme and they had a clapometer <laughs> that apparently, if you got the biggest clap, you know, you would... Uh, yeah you would win. I think it was a bit false actually. But anyway, I won on the clapometer and Pickety Witch won on the boat. That was when I was 14. Went to stage school with Phil Collins and Jack Wilde and then, yeah, moved on. I became then a headmaster and then I came back to it in 1996 doing performance again. So that was it basically. That's amazing. Um, yeah, my life. What brought you back in 96? Just like I'm sick of dealing with kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't <laughs> Me being a teacher headmaster, yeah, it was incredibly successful, but it, that wasn't really me. Uh, and it was mm. my wife that really got it going. She started it up and she was so, so talented. I would not have the guts to do it. For example, when we were teaching part time, we then thought, let's do a full time school. Well, she got a, a building, a 100% uh, mortgage. And I would never do that. I'd be much too scared to do that. Yeah. Went straight in it. And of course, we built it up and up. And then in 1996, or just before that, maybe a year before that, she sort of left the school and left me in charge. And as it wasn't me, I, I um, um, left it and sold it off and then went back to performance. Do you feel like, do, were you happy to do so? You see, it's the best decision you've made because obviously, well, look at you now. Yes, I think so. I think it was uh, the right decision. I was very, uh, I don't know, what's the, what's the word for it? A bit tender about the Go children because there's never yeah, a good yeah. time. There's always someone that's in their first year of doing exams, you know, but we, I passed it over to someone else. Um, I think selfishly, though, you've got to look at, you've got to look, yeah, look out for number one, haven't you, realistically, at the end of the day. If you're not happy yeah. doing, you know, you want to be happy doing what you're doing now. Then I think that's who I am. That's who I am. Yeah, really. well, exactly, exactly. So, and I think um, was, is there any? Oh, sorry. So, just want to say, I think it was a good idea because I don't know if you can sort of think there were there was performers that were also doing my business, Les Dennis, a um, couple of others. When they start young, like Lenny Henry, you start young, you're doing it, and you get like forties, and you've had enough, and you change. Yeah. And do something else because that you've had long enough. And where because I wasn't doing it all my early life, I could come back and do it and have other, you know, um goals set to do. So you wanted to say something else. No, that's okay. It's, it's no issue. I just mean to interrupt you, I do apologize. Um I was just wondering if there was like any any impressions that you you really do love doing, if there's anyone you particularly that you absolutely love to do every time. Uh, yeah, sorry, when you said, sorry for interrupting me, I was going to say, right, you've got detention. 
that's fine. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go. I'm a pain. Uh, no. Um, the impressions. Well, I, um, I think the ones I like doing are the ones that are successful and what people like. So obviously, Del Boy. Um, yeah. Is it? Uh, and it does change with with sort of the age group. I I do. Oh gosh, I'm a company. I did Del Boy, and then I did Joe Pasquale. But then at different places, I mean, I like going into a gig and doing Victor Meldrew. So if you were at a gig and you were sitting in the front, uh, yeah. I, I could go, good job, mate, I don't believe it. Look at that miserable old bastard. God. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and you could get away with it. If I called you a miserable old bastard in that character, you would laugh like you did. But if I did it as me, go, you miserable old bastard. You know, <laughs> so that's, that's, Sorry. <laughs> and I also, because like, I do big characters. That, that's, that's all I've done. Because now you don't get all those big characters. Only like Boris is the big character now, but no one else. So I like doing, Valencar, yeah. <laughs> I want chatty man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, um, oh so good <laughs> oh. yeah and and there's obviously gosh loads of loads of others um i like doing again this is slightly marmite i dress up as do ali g checking it out in it for real ah <laughs> <laughs> those kind of things i like oh that's um, fantastic <laughs> oh and yeah, yeah, um, I could go, you know, and the kids, oh, the kids, they're into uh, Fools and Horses, but also everybody, oh, that's Mr. Bean, oh, <laughs> very nice indeed. Oh. <laughs> and and that's the fate of the facials down as well, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. You know what, I do a great George Clooney, look, doing it now. Brilliant. <laughs> 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 oh, phenomenal. Oh, my days. Uh, and so- sometimes I do cartoons like, you know what I do? Uh, oh, my Simpson. Oh, my Simpson. Oh, my Simpson. He wants some donuts. Oh, my God. So I'm a massive Simpsons fan. So that's, that's incredible. Oh, yeah. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I don't know where to put myself. <laughs> I also offer celebrity messages where you can say, oh, could you do it? I do it as um, either just a voice or with a, um, what do I call it? it with um, a, a photograph that I manipulate to talk and oh, yeah. send it off to someone's phone. Like if you wanted to say happy birthday or whatever. And I, I do those, it's called celebrity messages. Um, but more and more people are getting into it now, so I don't do so much. Well, I share, because that came up on my Facebook actually today, and I actually shared that today, because obviously oh. with you being a guest tonight, so yes. um, I right. shared that on my wall today and was like, next week we've got Drew Cameron on our show, so um, spreading the word. And that, but yeah, it was really good. I think you dressed up as Donald Trump on there as well. Um, oh, yeah, I did, yeah. I don't normally do that very much, to be honest. I can't um, say I blame you, but he doesn't need uh, any more spotlight. So. Uh, <laughs> but it, our audiences are so weird. I've, I've done a couple of hotels in Eastbourne last year, and they, they went down really well. But a couple of people, i say a couple, maybe three, complained to the management, and I was sacked from going back there. Because Uncle Albert what? said um, semen stains and masturbates. He was were on the boat in the war. Oh, now, what? those two characters were in um, Captain, Captain Pugwash, yeah. the children's program, in the 70s. And people complain and I get sacked. That's ridiculous, isn't it? That is crazy. Oh, that, I, yeah. I hate when people do that, to be honest with you. Oh. When I want to complain about something for nothing. Oh, yeah. he said, he said semen. Oh, I was so offended. Yes. Yeah. Like, get out. <laughs> and get and the out. thing is, if they complain, fine. But the management go, oh, well, I listen to you. Forget the 98% of the other people that loved it. Yeah. They just listen to these idiots. Oh, does my head That's in. mad. Oh, dear. 
Yeah, yeah, stupid, everything. Isn't it? yeah every, it, it's the thing. It's the, like, I don't want to be uh, one of those people that's like not stereotypical, but everyone seems to hate everything at the moment. Everyone gets offended by everything now. If you don't like the joke, just that's fine. Just, just nothing happens. If you're offended, nothing happens to you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, no, just, just move on. Yeah, your life carries on. You, yeah. you don't get ill or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes no sense. I'm sorry to hear that. That's, that's rubbish. That is really rubbish. God, it is. Yeah, but. Bloody people. Yeah, not bothered. Because when you do the Family Fools and Horses show, nothing goes wrong. Because people are committed to come and see it, they love it, and it all works. So I prefer doing that a lot of the time. So how did you discover you could do the vo- I know you said you took the mick out of teachers, Amanda, but how did you discover you could impersonate certain people, if that makes sense? No, I, I didn't. I just, it just came naturally. I j- it just did it, you know, like at, at the school. And then it was um, about, I was about eight or nine when I did my first celebrity. And I can't remember the, the guy's name now, and you wouldn't know it, but he did a, a I'm an advert. And it was, oh, look, Cadbury's mini sponges. Oh, look. <laughs> and that's what he did. I can't remember his name, you probably wouldn't know him anyway. Uh, and that's the first one I tried and just moved on from there i don't know <laughs> yeah i wasn't that's fantastic it wasn't something i thought right i would like to do impressions i was just a cheeky little git but Naturally i tell you what it. it was good <laughs> <laughs> what was good practical i used that to uh deflect aggression by bullies at school I like that. for that reason yeah, yeah. I think Darren Brown talks about stuff like that to deflect bullies. Is just to talk about either do comedy, make people laugh, or just talk about absolute nonsense. I find it deflects because that's perfect. So you obviously you never got touched. No, <laughs> no, that's all. Right. No, yeah, beautiful. It worked for me. It worked. Yeah. So I like that. that was a good that's so good to have that in your arsenal. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Are, are there any impressions that? you wish you could do and just haven't can't quite get right like you've tried and it's just not happening uh no i don't think so so i'm looking to see if you can see me am i bright enough am i, I can see you. all right yeah we can uh, see yeah it's getting a bit dark in here um no i don't <laughs> think so the the only thoughts that i have are, as i said i only do big characters but there hasn't been a character that I really wanted to do and couldn't do. Um, no, I don't think so. It's like Mrs. Brown is a, a newer character. And uh, I think I was going, <laughs> Mrs. Brown, or is it like that? Um, I don't know. Uh-huh. But, but I, it's not someone that I really wanted to do, so I didn't bother. But but no, I can't think of anyone. The, the Del Boy one, I do remember I was in a holiday park <laughs> And it took me a long time to get that one because there's a rhythm. First of all, you have to get the it's sort of nasally and deep throat. But it goes with the rhythm. So I had to say the, uh, the his, his strap line was, you know, like, you, you know, it makes sense. And there's a rhythm, you know, it makes sense. You know, so I, it, it took me a while yeah. to get that. <laughs> <laughs> Once I got that, then I could express it and just go bonkers with it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, I did, um, sorry, a couple of weeks ago, sorry. I did a party and it was great. But some things I don't do because they're very old, like Frank Spencer. You remember Frank Spencer? I remember Frank Spencer. I remember Frank Spencer, yeah. 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 And I don't do it because it's like, uh, that's, that's very, uh, very old. But people asked me to do it. It was his 50th birthday. So I thought, okay, so, you know, <coughs> I did Frank Spencer for him. <laughs> oh, God, I <laughs> and I loved it. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was those big characters from the past. I suppose I've never really thought about it like that. You're right that there isn't really many big characters now. I think Mrs. Brown probably is the closest you could come up with at the minute. Yep. It's the only one I can think of. Can't think of anyone else. Really no. can't. No. No, I'm trying to think. I literally can't think of anyone. No. So, what made you venture to Britain's Got Talent then? Is it something you fancied doing? Did your wife were like, you know, you really should? 
like go and do that or <laughs> sorry i'm not i'm not too dark am i, I can, no you're okay am I? why did i do it well just curious what what made you go oh i've really fancy that i really fancy doing that i must have been drunk i think uh, <laughs> it it was i saw the first season and i thought hmm that might be worth doing to get more profile they didn't have professional people on for a number of years. Yeah. And so after a few years after it was on, I thought, oh, I'll do that. And I pretended that I was a website designer and went on and did it. And I didn't get the game. I understand the game now, but I didn't get it then. And I, as a professional, I was backstage and the director came around with a camera crew yeah. And uh, he said, uh, uh, Drew, he said, um, tell us how much this is your dream. <laughs> now, I was a man of a certain age as a professional. And I, <laughs> I said, what? My dream to win a talent contest? Are you mad? I'm not 12. <laughs> What's the matter with you? you know? And I was all like this. Of course, now you play the game so you yeah. could get more money and get more profile. But then I was like, I can't say grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't impressed at all. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm almost proud of you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I actually still feel like that. I, I, I still feel, you know, for God's sake, get talented people on. Stop playing this stupid game about it's my dream. No, I, I actually said to them, no, it's my dream to have a, a lovely family that are healthy and happy. Not to win a talent contest, but you know, I understand the game. I do. <laughs> why do you think that's why you didn't get through then? No, um, they, they no, they, they weren't happy. But what happened was, and I use this in my act, uh, which is true. Um, Ant and Deck were backstage with me, and they said, "Go break a leg, Drew." Hey, go break a leg. <laughs> Five days later, after I did, I broke my leg playing football. Oh. <laughs> and then snapped it in half. And it, this is again, it's in my act. It's absolutely true. I know when it was. It was on a Sunday morning, April the thirteenth, because it was my birthday. And I, oh. I snapped my leg in half. Bones were sticking out. Oh. And oh. I, told, I told my mates that I was going to get plastered on my birthday, and I bloody well was. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, snap. And, yeah. And they took me to hospital. And this is true, again, and again, I use it in my act sometimes, but this is true. They took me on a stretcher, put me in the ambulance. All my friends were out on the pavement uh, just, like, didn't know what to say. I had the oxygen mask on my face, and then I heard some, one of my friends started going, happy birthday to <laughs> And I oh, do a, I do so, a comedy bit about me being in hospital. I do some comedy about that. Um, you know, just change it around. I don't know if you want to hear it. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued. If you want to go for it, for yeah. Money, I, 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 I'll tell you what I do because I, I woke up after they, they operated straight away. It was very serious. I woke up, and this is true. I was in a mixed ward, and I didn't know you had mixed wards. Uh, at all because me and there was three elderly ladies seriously there and uh i was in there two days and then and then the doctor came around and he said well we need the bed um c can you um get dressed and um this is where i make it up now this didn't really happen and uh, i say oh my, my son had bought me some clothes because it was i had a football kit and bought me some homer simpson socks to cheer me up um which was nice so the, the, the doctor said i had to get dressed so i was sitting on the edge of my bed i was putting my homer simpson socks on and i thought i oh, know i'll cheer up the old lady next to me and i turned around to her and i went oh look at my lovely socks hey what's him doing this i thought she was going to join in you know i thought she's going to say mm, oh homie 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, no she was like yeah she just stared at me um but, and then she screamed she went <laughs> I think I should have put some pants on as well. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got my hand now. <laughs> oh, it's fucking brilliant. Oh, wonder, that margin <laughs> impression is 
spot on. It's absolutely <laughs> perfect. So good. I don't, um, I don't know when you start. Sorry. Oh, oh you're right. Tom froze. Oh, he's frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. So, you know, like, do an impression then, just out of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? Do it with like comedian. Oh. You froze then. I, I think my internet connection, I'm sorry, my internet connection is awful. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my internet's doing my nutting. I do apologise. <laughs> it's we definitely heard, me. <laughs> we heard you compliment the Marge impression and then you went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got so upset. No, um, I. I hate them. My, yeah, I did. I did. I had to leave. <laughs> what is going on? You see me? Can I can you see you. Me? Yeah, yeah. I can oh, see you. I? I can see you. Okay. <laughs> I, I can see you, Drew. I can see you both. There you go. I apologise for my awful connection. My connection <laughs> is terrible. Saying? I've turned my phone off and everything to make sure that nothing's taken the bandwidth or anything. Is that what you say to your partner? <laughs> Sorry about my... I don't have it? one, but if I were, yeah. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> if I had one, I would. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were mid question when you came back in, Tom. I was mid question. I do apologise. I think I don't know why my insets been so rubbish. It worked perfectly the past couple of days. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing now. Are we all good? Are we, can we all yeah, see we me? Ever, can anyone hear me? Yeah, I can. Am I still here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, we, you know. <laughs> Okay, so what I was I was asking, I apologise, is um, do you find that people ask you to do impressions like on the spot? Like, you know, they do like comedians, like, go tell me a joke then. Um, no, not so much. They normally say what you say. Well, what's your favourite impression to do? That's what I'm normally asked. And, That's good. and I say the same thing. Say, <laughs> my best impression is someone that's frozen. It's frozen again, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or he can't believe what he's talking to. <gasps> oh, he's back again. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses on. Oh, see so um, yeah, so I, I always say, oh, no, I haven't got one. You know, Del Boy, Joe Squally, I like doing. But... I like the Graham Norton laugh. That's really good as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live in Brighton, so I also do Gillian Clary. <laughs> <laughs> That's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, Paul O'Grady. Honest to God, do you know I love my dogs, you do. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, dear. Um, I also like doing, because it's a visual thing, and you remind me with your beard. Oh, no, the Aussie man. Oh, no, man. <laughs> obviously I've got the glasses I always say they might okay now <laughs> <laughs> get many guests in this interview today many know, guests yeah. <laughs> the Aussie one makes me happy because I'm a brummy so oh yeah you brummy <laughs> so oh, brummy. <laughs> So obviously we know about Britain's Got Talent, but when I was doing my research for this show, I couldn't believe just how many TV shows you've actually been on. I, mm. like I saw a clip from Judge Rinder, was Eggheads, Dead Ringers. Yeah. You've done a, quite a lot of TV. What are some highlights from your TV experience you've had? Um, it, it's funny, really, because it, I, I'm not doing them like I used to. And I, I, I think it's the what's going on with the media, not so much me, but... I did many different things, and one of them, and I could send you the, the video if you ever wanted to see it, was that I fell in love with a cardboard cutout of Ginger Spice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And someone in the media said, oh, would you do this? And we'll put it in the, the papers. And I think it was the Daily Mirror. It was going to go on the front page, but something important happened. I think it was um, a tennis game and I got pushed to page three. But I, I had the cardboard cut out of Jerry Spice and they, the, the um, Southern TV came and did a documentary on me and sleeping with her and taking her to the pub and all that. And then I went on to, oh, um, Sasha Baron Cohen, before he did his character, he had a, a TV programme. I went on his program. I then went on another program where they were talking about people and their, how they love celebrities and they use me as the topic. Uh, so I had me cut out of 
<laughs> your spice. <laughs> and I, I, before we did it, I said to the, um, the person there backstage, I said, you do know that this is not real. I went, yeah, yeah, no, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really, it's, it's really bizarre. Um, as I say, there's a video of it. I think it's on YouTube still. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll have to find that, yeah. <laughs> it's really odd. <laughs> I assume this wasn't your idea, no? No, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and what was funny, I think I did that at the end of the 90s, after I'd left the school, and when I went back there, everyone knew what I'd done. It was like <laughs> the headmaster had suddenly fallen in love with a couple cutter. <laughs> <laughs> what did the wife think of this? Uh, at the time, she joined in, but then she was, afterwards, she regretted it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like they'd, take, they'd taken the ball and run with it and kept it going and going and going. And it's like, you know, but... That'd be weird. <laughs> yeah. So what was the Judge Rinder thing? The clip I saw was the end of it where it said that you'd won. What was that? Oh, okay. That was... There's a, a, a lady comedian, a local who I know, who actually did it. And believe it or not, not all of them are real. Yeah, I figured they might not be. Yeah. <laughs> She's a comedian and I saw what she did. And then I, for some reason, I can't remember if she put me forward. Anyway, the company contacted me and said, have I got an issue with someone that I want to take to court? And I, I didn't really. And they insinuated, well, you know, what could you, and insinuated what I could do. So what happened was I've got a friend and she offered to be my manager to get work. And, and the first gig she got, she got the deposit, but she never gave it to me, which was fine because I wanted her to keep it to pay for. But we went to Judge Rinder's company and said, well, she owes me money. And I made up an amount, like 600 pounds, which she hasn't given to me. So that's what it was. And she thought, yeah, let's do that. But again, well, it ended up as though she was a really bad person on the, on the TV. And she regretted doing that, but I won six hundred quid, which the company gave. And um, yeah, it was. But it was uh, another reason for me to um, say what I was doing. It was a promotional thing. So he asked me. I don't know if you saw it. You know what do you do? And I promoted yeah. the funny fools and horses and the impression. Oh yeah, he said, "Can you do me? Did you see that bit?" Yes, I'm not brave enough or something like no. that. Yeah. But I can do, and I did add some gay people. <laughs> it was a bit, a bit subtle, I thought. And his face was all. Fair play to me, he was stone faced. Yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah. So, how do you keep um, your impression? Well, I was going to say, how do you keep them up to date and relevant? But you said earlier that there isn't really anyone. So, is there anyone that you may have dropped from your act because people just don't really know them anymore? Um, well, yeah, there was the, uh, the, the one I mentioned about, was, um, what, <laughs> Frank, Spencer. Frank, Frank Spencer. Spencer, that was it. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't really know because he's so, you know, out there still, no, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a problem. Um, sorry, I was just thinking about because I, I do so many different. Well, I do Michael McIntyre is a fairly big character in his yeah. voice. Um, I don't do him brilliantly, um, but he's quite visual. I mean, hello, 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 you will, you will, you will. You know, so that's a fairly big character to do. And um, <laughs> I think you just broke Tom doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh man. With the moustache, I also do Manuel. Hey, I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> Mr. Ford, he got crazy. He got crazy. <laughs> oh, my days. Oh, oh that's amazing. Yeah, you're going to have to be careful because, um, you know, I, I used to be I used to be doing, what's that bloke now you can never do? Um, did it, um, did it, um, um, what's it? Rolf Harris. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's wrong. A little while ago, I thought, oh, I've got some promo videos. Let's have a look. And I was doing that. I thought, no, I can't put that out. 
<laughs> to put that on the tape of the Jimmy Savile impressions. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And the only um, female one, I just, I'm just looking now so I can't remember, is um, the um, Sarah Millican, hello, pet. Can we see me, Nana? Oh, phenomenal. That's amazing. Um, I, well, one I don't do, I don't know. Sort of what to do, but I still find it funny, as you know. Um, Andy Murray's reputation is the uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he plays not so much now, I think he plays not loads now. <laughs> I think it's like that's just his personality now. He's three years well, I'd just be like miserable all the time. <laughs> well, he's perked up a, a lot since then, but. Has he? Oh, I haven't seen him for. I, I mean, I don't really watch tennis, if I'm honest. So um, no, 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 nor do I. Oh, that's oh. amazing. Yeah. So, have you got any other projects lined up other than the phony falls and horses, or any ideas circling in the head? No, only to get that back on the road. Also, the um, we're supposed to be taking it to Malaga to do four or five gigs in Malaga oh, wow. in October. Oh, wow. And yeah, it might be October, or might be November, and I'm hoping that will come off because, well, what a tough job I've got, haven't I? Having yeah. to go to Malaga. Oh, no, you poor sod. Go, wow. You've got to travel to Malaga to do the thing you'd love to do for a living. I know. <laughs> it's a hard life. Don't envy you at all. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm hoping that will come off, but you don't, you don't know, do you? You don't know what's going to happen. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed for you because there's nothing worse than being sat in the house every day doing nothing. I mean, that's how I feel. I, I haven't worked for months, so I'm just... Uh, oh, sorry, what, what, so what do you do? I don't, cause I don't know. Well, that's okay. <laughs> um, I work for the travel industry. Um, oh, shoot. Yeah, so it's just waiting. Just waiting yeah. to get back to work. We're taking bookings, but that's it. Mm. Nothing else happened. Nothing to yeah. do, is there? Travel Fun industry part. in as much as, what, flights or...? Uh, flights, cruises, coaches. Uh, we're going to be, we do stay out experiences. We do. It's called Just Go Holidays. It's based in Cheltenham, where I live, um, and right. we're a, we're like a solo uh, uh, independent company. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> okay. Um, you, you don't book acts on cruises, do you? <laughs> I don't. I don't actually know. I'll have to have a look into that. I'll, I'll have to have a look into it, Drew. Yes, I would be very interested in that. <laughs> I will. I will get. We've got your details anyway, so I will. Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, definitely for the phony falls and horses. I would have thought that would be really good on a cruise ship. Phony falls. That'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. People would love that as well. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Anyway. So <sighs> oh, did you have more... pass your audition? Say again, sorry. I hope I passed the audition today well um yeah he did oh. <laughs> i couldn't think of anything fast enough to say to be like well i'll keep it going for a little bit <laughs> tom did you have any more questions before we uh no i just i just i'd, I'd be honest i'd just love to hear marge simpson one more time well. <laughs> 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 Who did you want to hear one more time? Marge Simpson. Oh, Marge Simpson. Okay. Because yeah. I, I, I also do um, in that, that mode with um, Marge Simpson, I do a Wallace and Gromit. Oh! Because the, the funny thing about it, um, the bloke that does, oh, hello, there, Gromit, eh? Nice piece of Wensley Dale cheese. <laughs> That bloke did um was in Last of the Summer Wine, wasn't he? Doing yeah. doing Oh, hello Zed Combo. Oh, it's the same voice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I, I do a piece about that same voice. Michael Kane started with that. Anyway, so right, it's uh, <clears throat> Oh, how are you? I can't remember your name. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Drew, you've been absolutely amazing, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on. I don't know how you found me, but thank you very much indeed. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I got the idea in my head. I wanted to speak to impersonator. I don't know where I got the idea. So I literally just typed in Britain impersonator and you're the first name that copped up. Wow, really? Yeah. So I, famous? I thought, I'm obviously going to check a video out first. Make sure I don't hide, bring someone on and be like, oh God, what is this? So <laughs> watch the video. I was like, okay, this is fucking brilliant. I mean, I'm emailing this guy. I think as soon as I saw the video of you dressed up as Ozzy doing the impression, I was like, yeah, he's coming yeah. on the show. <laughs> I, I was very careful not to say what Ozzy says. Oh, for, for, for oh you swear, you swear away, my friend. You were allowed to, yeah, we, we weren't sure, so we refrained. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I better not. I don't want you to. I, I don't want you to get people complaining, being offended, because I know what that's like. <laughs> oh, trust me, if people are going to get offended by the show. We achieved that a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man! Oh! <laughs> Drew, that, thank you so much, mate. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. You want to plug, my friend. Any social media? Any upcoming events? Um. Uh, well. Uh, can I send you the invoice afterwards? Yeah, of course. I'll send you a blank check. <laughs> Literally, um, not, not even going to sign it. Just an empty check. <laughs> yeah. Blacked out. Um, I uh, no, don't think I have actually. Not that's coming up. But the only thing I would say is to check out Phony Fools and Horses. It's a web. Um, it is a website, but it's on Facebook as well. So just Phony Fools and Horses. Yeah. Amazing. Just connect and celebrity messages. If anyone's interested, I do all kinds of voices, all kinds of videos for people, um, corporates or whatever. Wonderful. Have you had any really bizarre, bizarre requests to these celebrity voices? A bizarre one? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say bizarre. Lots of different ones to announce events for people. Uh, no, nothing outrageous I just love one like dear Drew could you do me a favour could you please use Del Boy to tell my boss I'm f I quit and I'm sick of his shit <laughs> <laughs> I would do that <laughs> love it anyway thank you so much for coming on Drew thank really appreciate it mate so much fun thank you thank you Thanks thank you very much, much. pleasure take care take Thanks, care my I'll friend get me some geeks on the cruise thanks very much <laughs> I will don't you worry <laughs> cheers then Happy cheers. Cheers. take care fella have a nice Christmas. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bye-bye, Jamie. Bye-bye, Tom. Bye Take bye. care, Drew. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye. All right. It's Thursday night. Well, howdy doody, everybody. This is Braden Berry from Say We Can Fly, founder of Stay Cozy Clothing. Your one-stop shop for the coziest, most fashionable hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Gorsh, Mickey. That's right, folks. And we're proud to say that we are now sponsoring... The Chronicles of Podcast. Ouch. Hosted by Tom and Jamie. <laughs> like, you can get 10% off, man. That's right, Shaggy. Just use the special code, The Chronicles, at checkout. Oh, boys. Oh.